Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habata fillah from the supplications of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam which are vital for us to learn uh, comes the dua dukhul al-masjid meaning the supplication for entering the masjid and there are two primary supplications that we'll quickly go over uh, and try to keep things as concise as possible but we will try to gain some benefit uh, and so one of the supplications uh, is as was uh, collected in Abu Dawood in Kitab al-Salah Amal al-Bani declared it as a sound hadith also in Sahih Targhib or Targhib is the dua in which the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said A'udhu billahi al-Azim bi wajhi al-Kareem wa sultanihi al-Qadim min shaytan al-Rajim again A'udhu billahi al-Azim bi wajhi al-Kareem wa sultanihi al-Qadim min shaytan al-Rajim أعوذ بالله العظيم بوجهه القريم وسلطانه القديم من الشيطان الرجيم. Which means, I seek refuge in Allah, the Magnificent, by His noble face and His pre-eternal domain, His سلطانه. From the accursed devil, from the accursed shaitan. So this supplication is one of the supplications that we supplicate uh, upon entering the masjid. And in general, this supplication, the one who is supplicating with this supplication is seeking refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal, first and foremost. A'udhu billah, a'udhu billah, a'udhu billah al azim so seeking refuge in Allah, the Magnificent. Okay? Seeking refuge from the shaitan upon entering the masjid. And this is a means of drawing nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and isti'adha, which is a type of ibadah, it's a type of worship. So this falls under tawheed. Because a lot of people get tired, tawheed, tawheed, tawheed. But all of our deen is built upon tawheed, the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaitan, whether that be reading the prayer, whether that be this adhkar or this uh, dua supplication upon entering the, the masjid, this is a way of, of uh, this is a type of ibadah. And it is seeking refuge in your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala from the accursed shaitan. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la hawla wa la quwwata illa bih. There is no might, no power except save with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he, tabarak wa ta'ala, is the owner of the dominion. He is the one who can protect, support, and preserve you from anything that the shaitan or shayateen can try to harm you with. Alim, you know, this is a sifa, this is a characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is the most magnificent subhanahu wa ta'ala. It shows, and it's very hard to articulate some of these things in English, but in Arabic, it really, this shows us the importance of learning the Arabic, and this is also one of his divine uh, attributes, you know, his magnificence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and from his asma'i wa sifat, it's from his names and attributes, al-azim, you know, al-azim, there is... You know, nothing and no one like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he, tabarak wa ta'ala, is the most magnificent, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is azim in his might and in his power. Biwajihi uh, al-kareem, by his, uh, they say, they, by his noble face. Okay, by his noble face. Showing us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this this dua, as with many of the ahadith and uh, ayat, would show us about some of the sifat, some of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a face. 
but we don't say his face is like our face. So we don't describe it and have a picture of it and think of it like this or think of it like that. But we know because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it about himself in the Quran. In Surah Al-Rahman. And here and in this dua, the Prophet sallallahu mentions it about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jama'ah affirms that. And they say that this is from his sifat dhatiya, which means sifat or characteristics or attributes uh, that describe his self. And I say his self because this is a point I want to mention regarding translations. I saw somebody who is from Ahl Sunnah, but they translated these type of attributes, uh, dhatiya, to say his person. How in the world can you, that's a big, big error right there. In translation that you would say his person we don't say his person no matter even if you go to the English Arabic dictionary and you might find that in, but the that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is describing him his self so it's more befitting to say his self not his person because then it seems as if you're making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out to be a person or like a person which is not the case Abedin and Sultanihi, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one, Tabarak wa ta'ala, who owns all the dominion and He lords and rules over all things. So this is in fact a part of His His Lordship, His Rububiyah. This is Tawheed al Rububiyah. So really, in this dua, you see both, you see all three aspects of Tawheed. You see Tawheed, uh, there, there's an aspect of Tawheed. Uh, Al-Uluhiyah, which is Tawheed al-Ibadah, meaning Tawheed of worship. Because you're seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the accursed shaitan. And then there's also Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. They're the divine names and attributes that are mentioned in this dua. al azim Okay, that's from his Sifat. And also, bi sultanihi You know, this is like his lordship. So this is Rububiyah. So all, as, all three... Uh, uh, taqsim, taqsimat or the aqsam or the divisions of Tawheed the categories of Tawheed you'll find that in this supplication you'll find that in this supplication uh, and then the next supplication that we want to which is the one which is more uh, widespread and, and widely known and this is another supplication in which the Prophet, <coughs> the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this you'll find, you'll find this uh, in a hadith, this is in Sahih Muslim, in Kitab Salat al-Musafirin, also in, uh, you'll find this also in uh, Sahih Ibn Majah. So in this, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is before entering the masjid, Bismillahi wa salat, wa salatu wa salam, Ala Rasulillah. Allahum li abwab rahmatika. Again, Bismillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillahi. Allahum li abwab rahmatika. Bismillahi wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. Allahum li abwaab rahmatika which means bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah in the name of allah wa salatu wa salam and may peace and blessings be bestowed upon the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then allahumma allahumma iftah o oh allah open for me your Doors of mercy. So before entering the masjid, you are actually, uh, uh, this is the meaning. So as far as the meaning of this supplication, you are supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're seeking his barakah in the beginning of the dua. Bismillahi wa salatu wa salam. And then you are praising the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sending salat and salam upon Nabi and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then you are supplicating with a very short supplication saying, O oh Allah, open for me your doors of mercy. And you see the importance of supplicating with the dua and the, and the adhkar 
at the important moment because since you're entering the masjid in the masjid you want to get what? You want to also get mercy. You want mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here you're beginning Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah and then and then you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him to open his doors of mercy for you. And it shows us how important it is to supplicate with the correct supplications at the correct time. And we'll talk about that more in depth when we study the dua for leaving the masjid, which is similar, but there's a slight difference in what you're asking for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you'll see the relationship because there you're asking, here you're asking to, in, you're entering the masjid, you're asking for Allah to give you mercy because you need mercy. You need mercy during your prayer. You're coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're humbling yourself in ibadah to Him, to wa ta'ala alone. So you need his mercy. You want his mercy. You want him to forgive you. When you leave the masjid, you've left this act of ibadah and you're going out into the world. So you, you leave the masjid and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his fadl, for his, his bounties, for, for, for his blessings and his bounties. So you see, you see the importance that every dua, that they have a, uh, an intent and a purpose and everything in its rightful place. So going on to some of the quick benefits of this, uh, what we benefit from this. One of the things that we benefit from this, uh, this supplication, uh, and both these supplications in fact, is the مَشْرُوعِيَةِ to إِسْتِعَادَ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ In general and specifically. So it shows us that it, in general, that in general and specifically in these circumstances that it is legislated you know it's an Islamic practice <coughs> to seek refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan so in general if you become angry A'udhu Billah Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim A'udhu Billah Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan and when you're, uh, so that, that's just in general, you know, but that's a specific cir circumstance, but in general, you can say that. But especially, especially uh, a specific time is, is when, uh, you know, entering the, the masjid, as this is one of the supplications. So here we see the meshru'iya <coughs> that is legislated to seek refuge in Allah from the accursed shaitan. Another benefit of this is we also talked about the ithbat or the affirmation of the characteristic, uh, the divine characteristic of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the wajhillah, the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we don't describe a face at, in, in the way that his creation has a face or we just, we make ithbat, we affirm his faith, his face, but we don't know how. We don't know the kafiyah. Any of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we affirm them as Allah affirmed them. We affirm as the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed them. And we don't explain them. We don't ask the, the how. We don't say how. How is his face? How is, is his face? His face is like this. His face is like, no. We, that, is, that is knowledge we don't have knowledge of. And Ahlul Sunnah doesn't even go into those affairs, nor do they need to. Nor is it going to help you. It will only hurt you and cause you to deviance and misguidance. Because we don't know that's an al ghaib We don't know. But we affirm it. We don't negate it. And we don't distort its meaning. Another uh, benefit uh, that we learn from these two supplications is that in general, the Muslims should strive their utmost to uh, supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often and learn those supplications that the Prophet Sallallahu taught us for the various different circumstances. And in the case of entering the masjid, you're entering the masjid seeking the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You're seeking the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. You're seeking His forgiveness. You're seeking His mercy and His favor. And you're coming closer to your Lord. It's ibadah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Ali wa Sahbihi Wasallam.